I positively hated this car when it was brand new, and I still hate this car. It's over the top, it's ridiculous, it's plasticky. Oh, it just makes me feel slimy. But at the same time, I freaking love it. I present to you our latest purchase, a 2003 Cadillac Escalade. I truly believe part of the reason I didn't understand the Escalade when it was new is, uh, well, let's be honest, I'm just not cool enough. The last concert I went to, uh, it was a sea of whiteheads. Basically a Medicaid convention. Pre-war bops is what I was listening to with everybody over the age of 90 years old. And the Escalade, well, the Escalade was bought by people who were very cool. Leading artists in the hip-hop, the rap genre. This was their vehicle. People like S Small Wayne. What, what's his name? Little Wayne? Lil, Lil, Lil Wayne? See, that's the point I'm trying to make. I'm not cool enough to understand the allure of the Escalade. But seriously, this vehicle was a must-have in the early 2000s if you meant anything to the music industry. You had to have one of these. Jennifer Lopez wasn't like, ooh, should I get an Escalade or should I get a Touareg? No! You bought the Escalade! It was this vehicle. Sure, maybe, maybe if you were a little little niche you'd get a navigator, but no, if you meant anything in the music industry in the early 2000s and you were cool unlike me, this was your rig. I am not a profound person if that wasn't already blatantly clear. I'm a annoying nerd that, that talks about cars and trucks, whatever. I have come up with the only profound thing in my entire life, and I think this is pretty accurate. The second generation Escalade is the Las Vegas of the automotive world. You see, just like Las Vegas, it's exciting, it's glitzy, it's glamorous, it's over the top, but at the same time, well, it's kind of seedy, you know? It's kind of deceptive, it writes checks it can't cash, it's in some ways downright bad. But just like the city of Las Vegas, exciting things happen in Escalades. Great stories are made in Escalades. Very few of these are actually bought by people that just want to kind of commute to work and drive the kids to school. No! These are bought by people that want to make the news. The backseat of the Escalade is a place where people are born. It's a place where people have died. It's a place where people have died. Like, like, died, died, let me tell you that much. Every substance known to man has been consumed, inhaled, or sat on in the back of an Escalade. They're exciting, just like Las Vegas, and I think that is kind of the allure. And you're probably thinking, well, this one, this beige Escalade is shiny, it's survived pretty well. This thing hasn't had a lot of exciting things happen, and, until you smell it. Okay, sure, a few of these were sold to, like, old folks and communities in Sarasota, whatever, but the vast majority of them were not sold to people like that, and fast forward 20 some years, the vast majority of them are totally roach because of all the uh, illicit adventures which have taken place inside and outside of these Escalades. And this one, while well, it survived pretty well, but the aroma in here, I can perfectly describe it to you. It's like a mix of fat old hairy guy in a Turkish bath mixed with like a subpar Reno strip club. It's it's horrible. I mean, it smells like sweat and shame in here. And I I don't know, I don't know what was what was perhaps vaped or smoked or something in here. But I think it's everything is the answer. The first gen Escalade, which was introduced in the late 1990s, sold pretty well for what it was. And what it was was, let's be honest, a slightly tweaked Yukon with some plastic wood on the inside. Now the second gen Escalade, this was something totally new. This was a slightly tweaked Yukon with some fake plastic wood on the inside, but what they did right with the second generation Escalade is tweak it slightly more than the first gen. So yes, it is based on what they call the GMT 800 platform, but the front end is super different than like a Tahoe, a Suburban. And of course, this one has aftermarket lights and a grill because every Escalade has aftermarket lights and a grill, but even still, it was very squared off and it looked pretty different. And that was a smart move by Cadillac. Now under the hood of this Escalade, you will find a Vortex 6000, which is a fantastic way of saying this is a 6 liter V8. This is actually a really good engine. They use these for decades and decades and decades in trucks and SUVs and heavy duty trucks and this is a, a really solid engine. Now um, 
in the Escalade, it made 345 horsepower and like 380 some pound feet of torque. Like this was actually a very powerful engine back in its day. In fact, Cadillac advertised that when they introduced the second gen Escalade for the 2002 model year, this was the most powerful SUV in the world. So driving the Escalade. Now this would be like a German engineer's nightmare. It would be complete scheiße, but it's, it's wonderful. I don't care what German engineers think because we don't drive in Germany, we drive in America like this for miles going in a straight line and the Escalade is perfect for that. Now this has something called RSS, Road Sensing Suspension, and I think that's mostly marketing, but the idea was that like it could sense wheel position and then adjust the dampers to best suit where you're driving, whatever. But it, none of it worked, it's just, it floats. It floats everywhere, it floats up bumps, it floats up driveways, it floats over potholes and obstacles on the road and peasants and all of it. But it's it's wonderful. Like it's such a good comfortable ride. This also has height adjustable rear suspension. So if you load it up heavy full of illicit materials in the back, it's not gonna it's not gonna, you know, squat. It's gonna stay nice and level. This has got a great ride. So when Cadillac introduced this Escalade for 2002, um, I think they quickly realized they messed up a little bit and they didn't tweak the Yukon interior enough and then they completely redesigned the inside for 2003 so that's what this one is. Now check this out right so we got the fuzzy seat covers and that only means one thing probably going to be a knife fight underneath here but actually look the seats are in really nice condition for a vehicle with 187,000 miles so I'm surprised that, that actually someone put that on to preserve the seat bottoms which is interesting. Now the overall dash layout is pretty similar to like a Yukon or Yukon Denali but it's covered, plastered in this like plastic woody trim. Um, honestly, you know, this would have been a big problem if you bought this thing brand new in 2003 for $57,000. But now that we bought this 20 years later for six grand, I kind of like it, you know? It's just, it's just so American. It's like, you wouldn't find this on like the German cars of the era. It's just, it's exciting and it's funny and it's kind of goofy, but it is very American. And I do like that in, in, in my old school SUVs. <laughs> 4,000 RPM. This engine's got a great exhaust note, completely stock exhaust on this Escalade, but it's got kind of a nice burble, which the new ones are missing, and genuinely impressed with the way this thing accelerates. Uh, I think they, they claimed a magnificent zero to 60 of 8.57 seconds is what the literature said back in the day, which sounds terrible by today's standards, but it is pretty good for a waterbed on wheels. Like it, it does get you down the road with a surprising amount of confidence, and the transmission is buttery just total butter. Uh, I don't think it's slipping, it just has these nice kind of soft, relaxed shifts. And no part of you wants to drive this thing quickly, uh, but you know, if you do need to get to the, the, the rap, the, 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 the rap music convention in a hurry, the engine, the engine can do it for you. Now this is one of the most ostentatious features inside the Escalade, the chrome door handle, but it is seriously the lowest quality chrome door handle I have ever seen. I genuinely think that someone in Arlington, Texas, where this vehicle was built, took a plastic door handle and then simply spray painted it silver. That's horrible. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't look good, but that's the choice that the designers made with the O2 Escalade. Now, one aspect of the interior, which I do think is lined in real wood is the steering wheel. <laughs> this is a really nice steering wheel. It's a four spoke design Cadillac crest in the middle and the wood feels surprisingly good on both the top and the bottom. It's also a great thickness. It's just a nice feeling wheel. Now the gauges in the Escalade are kind of an interesting dichotomy. It's like, well, we got to keep the gauges from the full size truck SUV platform. So we've got transmission temperature and oil pressure, none of which a single Escalade owner has ever looked at um, <laughs> with any intention of gaining any knowledge from. But then they were like, oh shoot, this is a Cadillac. We got to make it look good. So let's slap some Art Deco looking plastic in the middle and, and call that a fancy gauge. <laughs> so like the speedometer is this chrome plastic line thing with these kind of vague numbers. Um, and I guarantee that this vehicle was bought brand new and pegged at 120 miles an hour for its entire life. That's where it's just sat for the last 20 years. So the front of the Escalade is <laughs> such a funny dichotomy of like chrome and big wheels and chrome and you know, whatever. But <laughs> it's got tow hooks, like giant exposed tow hooks. It's like, we're gonna have metal flake in the paint and then big beefy tow hooks for when 
for when you get stuck. What is that noise? Now, as much as I do give this car crap, the seats, the seats are so good. Why don't we do seats like this anymore? I've been in the new Escalades and they're phenomenal cars and they're very fancy, but you don't sink into the seats like you do in the O3. These are like the ultimate lounge chairs. Cadillac crests in the headrest and they're captain's chairs as well. So even the front seats, you got like the big center console here, but even the front seats have captain's chairs. And back here we see remnants of some white powder. Don't know what that is. We buy it with it on there and I'm gonna tuck it away before the DEA gives me a phone call. Now the clock perfectly sums up kind of the luxury facade that the Escalade perfectly portrays. Now you'll notice that this is a reputable company which aligns this clock, Bulgari. I didn't know about them because I'm not cool enough to know about them, but I did Google them and like that's a, that's a premium clock manufacturer. But then you look at the Monroni or the vehicle sticker, it's not actually a real Bulgari clock. It's Bulgari inspired. So yes, it does have their logo on there and it does look kind of nice in the video, but then you touch it <laughs> it's super clear that it's just like plastic Chineseium in there. That is not a quality timepiece. Now let's talk about the infotainment screen in the Cadillac. That's right, infotainment. Even in 2003, you could spec it with a screen. Now it isn't a touch screen, which is interesting. So you can actually touch it. It did have navigation. I don't unfortunately have the map disc, but it is a proper screen with buttons on the side and this is how you configure it. So like you can go to your FM radio and then you use these kind of shortcuts. In 2003, I bet this looked pretty darn good. And one other thing I'd like to point out too, uh, let's go back to the boot up screen. This was a big deal. This has a Bose audio. So sound by Bose, I think that was standard in the Escalade, something like 11 speakers. It's not a fantastic audio system by modern day standards, but back in the day, I, I bet it was pretty darn good. In the center console, we see a C, up, up, I mean, this is a, just a panel of, I, I assume it's fake wood. Maybe someone will yell at me. Maybe I've been wrong this whole time and it's like, well, actually it's real walnut sourced from Siberian walnut trees or something, but I'm pretty sure it's fake because it feels terrible. Uh, but here we've got our cup holders and then in front of that is the ashtray. You know what's funny about this car? Look at this, like you can see remnants of like um, cigarette butts all throughout here, right? But <laughs> look at the lighter. <laughs> the lighter's never been used. <laughs> That's a brand new lighter, kind of the funny quirks on this particular one. Now, above that, we do have the six disc CD changer. It works fantastic. And just like every used car, every owner forgets to take out the, the CDs and you get a great mixture of whatever the previous owner was listening to. In this case, it's like all 1970s funk and disco. Now this is one of the funkiest features in the Escalade, which I think was super forward thinking of them. On the door, you've got one and two, and I thought those were just seat memory recall buttons. Oh no, these are legitimate driver profiles, just like you'd find on a modern day Tesla or any modern day luxury car, right? So when you push them, not only do the seats move, but everything changes. So the radio will readjust, uh, the climate control will readjust, it'll even like default to uh, your different settings, like everything changes. It's not just the seats, it's the climate control, it's what's playing on the radio. That was really forward thinking for Cadillac back in the day. Um, and even 20 years later, it still works pretty well. So here we see two interesting buttons on this O3 Cadillac. Now this first button, that is to disable your stability control, which was somewhat, somewhat forward thinking in the early 2000s. Now they called it Stabilitrack which is the, the best name. I just love that, like those, you know, I love when they, they, they do like the Skylighter and they give all these funky American names and stuff, but stability track is traction control, works pretty well. Now next to that is actually the radar sensors for the backup system. As you go to back up the Escalade, you might notice in the right rearmost pillar, there's kind of like a little black panel. And as I get closer to an object, what it's gonna do is actually ding and display a light. So about to approach a wall, there's the ding. We got one yellow light. And as we continue to get closer to the wall, it should display another light. There we go. And then eventually right before I hit the wall, not that I trust it, it might go to, to three. Or I don't know, we might just get in an accident. There we go. Ah! and then it beeps and beeps and beeps, and that's how you know you're about to hit something. Uh, pretty cool system, uh, but of course, if you have a trailer, because this vehicle can tow something like 
7,800 pounds, I think is reading in the owner's manual. You can disable it by pushing the button there on the dash. Now here in the middle of the dashboard, we have the climate control panel, and it's actually dual zone automatic climate, but they were kind of too lazy to give it two displays. So what you get instead is the controls for one side dictated by the arrow, and then when you sync them up, you get, you get two arrows letting you know, hey, you've synced it up. But if you want to do the passenger side, you start turning that, and then that arrow lets you know, oh, the passenger is now adjusting the climate control. Luckily though, it is a full automatic system. Other cool thing about climate control this vehicle does have heated seats in the front and the back and just like modern day GM vehicles you can choose to heat either your backrest or your back and your butt. As we step into the back of the Escalade, the leather-lined extravagance continues and actually a really, really good rear seat. Now they were available in two two kind of different configurations, a standard one and then the ESV, which was a long wheelbase one. Oh, they did a truck too. I forgot about the truck, the EXT. That thing was rad. I think that was based on the Avalanche. Yeah, Case just gave me the yes of approval. Now back here, a couple of things. First of all, huge cup holders, which are currently holding these ice waters because it's negative four degrees today, but these fold down, you got a couple of cup holders. And then back here, we have climate controls, those heated rear seats I was telling you about, and radio controls. So if you want to listen to your your own kind of headphone the whatever. I don't know if the, I, did anyone actually use this back in like the early 2000s? Several vehicles had these where rear seat occupants could listen to their own music through headphones. I'm not sure that's ever been used, but anyways, that's what's back there. One other thing about that rear seat entertainment system, when you open up the center console, you lift this up and there's a spot for the headphones, the Escalade branded headphones. Oh, we're missing that. When this thing goes to the Pebble Beach Concours in 20 years from now, we're gonna get docked points. Not, not that the smell is gonna help, but. <laughs> when it comes to folding the rear seats in the Escalade, first you lift up on the bottom cushion, and then when you go to lift up on the back cushion, are you ready for this? This is pretty technologically advanced. The headrest <laughs> will actually fold down automatically, unlike the previous generator to pull it out. Now let's check out the third row. Uh, the <laughs> It's not a great third row, to be honest. Your legs are pretty high. I think if you wanted the ultimate com comfort, you'd want the long wheelbase version. It's not horrible, but I wouldn't want to do like a five hour road trip back here. You do have this big cubby in the uh, back of the third row, which appears to have gone all early 2000 GM on me. Oh, that, hopefully it's not a body in there. Um, but that's what's back there, cup holder. Yeah, pretty basic third row. Be good for kids though. Not, not bad for kids. Look at the enormous Cadillac logo. This thing was huge back in the day. That's a that's a chunky logo. And then over here is the Redneck Edition. That's not factory. The previous owner put that on. Uh, so let's talk about the trunk in the Escalade. Now to get into the trunk, you got two options. The first option, you push in on this button and lift up the glass. And that's a very smart feature. Really forward thinking. Great to get stuff in and out. Super easy to use. Now the other way to get in the trunk is to lift the whole thing open. And I was watching like the promo videos when they launched this vehicle and they were talking about like the art and science design language and the seamless integration of the rear handle into the rear deck lid. This is horrible. That's just terrible. It looked terrible when it was new and it still looks horrible. Like you can see they, they tried to color match it so like it blends in. This doesn't blend in. It sticks out like a full inch past the edge of the bodywork. It's terrible. It feels horrible. Oh, this was not a good design. But lift it open. You got access to the trunk. Now, third row comes out super easily. Uh, two different seats, and they each weigh, according to the promo video, just 38 pounds. Which I couldn't lift out. You think I could lift out 38 pounds? No way. I'd have to call Case, and he'd have to come lift them out. But that's what's in the back of the Escalade. Um, grab handle over here, uh, fake leather, of course, and then grab that, pull it down so you don't have to get your hands dirty by grabbing the dirty outside of the vehicle. And then tow hitch in the back. Uh, very, very good tow rigs though, uh, solid rear axle, and um, there we have the seven pin connector. So how much did we pay for the Escalade? I honestly can't remember if I already said it. Maybe I did, but I'm gonna say it again in a big, <laughs> big reveal. $6,000, now it does have a complete service history and we are only the third owners of this thing, which is kind of, kind of cool. Um, I love it. I really do. It's a terrible vehicle in so many ways, but um, it's just kind of cool, you know? Like this is, this is like the old school Americana. It just doesn't exist anymore with Cadillac now trying to battle the Germans in the Nürburgring. They didn't give a hoot about that with developing the Escalade. It was just meant to be big, brash, plasticky, leathery, 
luxuriousness. And I, I think it's, I think for that, it's, it's very, very cool. Now let me know what you think in the comments section below. And as always, we'll see you on another episode of TFO Classics.